Vitam. The Next Frontier. These are the stories of Neil's messy basement. It's ongoing mission. To keep Neil entertained. To geek out. And to serve as the house cat's toilet. To boldly be where Neil's wife refuses visitors on a regular basis. This is Neil Schneider from Men To Be Seen. Welcome to the special Star Trek Bridge Crew edition of Neil's Messy Basement. And to my right is Captain DJ. Say hi, Captain DJ. Hi. We have good you all. <laughs> and who else do we have here? Um, First Officer Brownie. First Officer who? First Officer Brownie Bear. <laughs> So I don't normally let him play with the virtual reality equipment at all, but look, you know what? It, it was a it was a special occasion. So we're going to be back with more right after this. I know there are a lot of Star Trek Bridge Crew reviews out there. So what I decided to do was I was going to share I'm going to share some tips with you so that you'll be better captains, better helmsmen, better tactical ops officers, and of course better engineers. And hopefully, you won't end up like a red shirt like myself. So let's get started. So what, what the heck is Star Trek Bridge Crew? Well, Star Trek Bridge Crew is a mission based simulator. You can, you, you are on the bridge of the USS Aegis, a Federation starship in the current Star Trek universe. And when I say the current Star Trek universe, I mean the modern movies where Chris Pine is, is the captain. And as the name suggests, you're literally on the bridge in virtual reality you're sitting down at the stations you're in the game really exciting stuff this is this is like the fantasy of of the majority of star trek geeks out there geeks like myself so so there you go so here are some quick facts about the game it's developed by red storm entertainment published by ubisoft it runs on the htc vive the oculus rift and sony playstation vr so pretty much all the major brands that uh, support uh, Star, Star Trek Bridge Crew. What's really cool about this game is there is an important multiplayer component to this. And no matter which, which solution you're running, you can interact with others. So you're all in the same universe together, no matter what you're running, whether it's the Vive, the Rift, or PSVR uh, solutions. So really, really exciting stuff. Now, this is a seated virtual reality experience, which means that you don't need to to dedicate a lot of space in your room to, to make the VR work. And I mentioned that it's got multiplayer support, which is which I'll talk about a little bit later. There's also a single player campaign and you can play single missions as well. So you don't have to play with other people to enjoy the game. But really, there is a lot of enjoyment to be had in the multiplayer. So what what are the mechanics of the game? What you know what what do you actually do mission to mission? So most of the missions have to do with exploring you know, going out to different solar systems and scanning anomalies and, and figuring out what's going on. You do a lot of spying. So uh, this isn't, you know, when I first heard about Star Trek Bridge Crew, I fantasized that you're, you know, the captain of the ship and you just jump into the solar system and you yell out, shields up! And you go into battle. It's not quite like that. It's actually more of a, a submarine type of mechanic where you're sneaking around and you don't actually, actually want to be detected by the enemy and when you do only then do you you know you start going into red alert and and all that battle stuff lots of fun um you do uh, so so you do exploring you do spying uh you do rescuing so the, and you know there's always someone in trouble out there and for whatever reason you're the only starship available who can help so you're gonna you're going to be dealing a lot with that and finally space combat which no matter what mission you're in i assure you you're going to hear the sounds of a cloaked vessel and uh, you know it's very likely that you'll be going into combat no matter what mission you you uh, participate with now there's multiple classes in the game so you, you know the, the the bridge is composed of the captain the helmsman the tactical officer 
and the engineer. And each has, of course, an, a very important role. The captain obviously commands the ship. However, it's not just that you're telling people what to do. Your character is the only one that gets the key information needed to complete the mission. So you're, you're going to be given objectives. You're going to be advised of, you know, things that you could do that, you know, might give you advantages over your enemies. So, so the captain has a very important job. Uh, and of course, everything, you know, rests on, on his or her shoulders. Uh, and of course, the captain helps plot the courses and determines, you know, where, where the ship is ultimately going to go. The helmsman uh, is, is responsible for all the ship's movements, whether you're, you know, in the local solar system, just moving around or you're, you're, you're zapping around at impulse speed or going to warp. The, you know, whether you need to get into a system or out of a system, emergency moves, it's all left to the helmsman. Very important job. Tactical, the tactical officer or ops, this is the person responsible for all the weapons control, scanning, um, system intrusions. What that is, is you could actually scan your enemy and through some hacking, you could, you know, disable their weapons and disable their engines or shoot through their shields, like all kinds of neat stuff that, that the tactical officer is able to do. Um, and of course they, they control if memory serves the transporter as well. So very important, uh, officer on the bridge. And finally, you've got the engineer. I mean, <laughs> this is the, the underappreciated yet key person on the bridge. They're the ones who get you the power so that the ship can move. They're the ones that give you enough energy that your shields can, can stay up. They, you know, when, when things go wrong and, and your ship takes on damage, which it will, the engineer has to uh, get the rep repair crews out there and prioritize what needs to be repairs, repaired first. Uh, they also have control over the transporters and, and to do these system intrusions to, you know, to, to uh, put the enemy at a disadvantage. So the engineer, uh, very important character on the bridge. Now, what makes Star Trek Bridge Crew as a game unique? Well, this is a game that is 100% virtual reality. I, it's, it's just not something that can be played on, on a traditional system. You need a virtual reality device, and it is designed that way. Uh, this is, I think this is easily one of the most socially uh, you know, active and team-oriented games I have played to date. Uh, you, you literally have to have open communications with all the other players to get through through the missions you know you you have to kind of you have to know what the other players are going through you have to listen to instructions carefully you have to advise other people what's going on and it's really something else it's really you know once you get the hang of the game and you know how things work to see the the bridge gel together uh, it, it's very very rewarding and there's all kinds of stuff that's been coded that you you know that it's easy to take for granted that you can gesture or even, you know, you talk to someone else in the game and you roll your chair around to talk to the captain or the tactical officer or the engineer, wherever things are, and you do it naturally and you don't even realize that you're doing it. Very, very social. And it, 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 it's so natural. It's, it's easy to, to take for granted. And it really does make you feel like you're on the bridge of a starship. I mean, you even, you know, I know as, a, let's say, if I'm playing as a captain, I'm constantly looking at the monitor, you know, seeing what's going on, like a tactical overview of where my ship is and where the enemies are. But, you know, you're doing it and you're thinking, but I'm still on a bridge. I have to still be aware of what's going on around me. Anyway, really, really well done. So what do I like about the game? What did I like in Star Trek Bridge Crew? Well, there was a great deal. Uh, of course, the graphics are top grade. I mean, this is the AAA game. Obviously, nothing, you know, uh, no ex no expense was was missed here. Um, the roles were really well thought out. It, you know, each character has their job to do, and they have to cooperate with the others so that they're successful. The multiplayer is out of this world. I mean, this is easily one of the best multiplayer games I've 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 played in some time. And you know, one thing too is I, I know VR. You know, this modern era of VR is relatively new. Uh, it, it's very easy to find matches. You you know, you, you get into the game. There's a there's a lobby. You, you know, as soon as four players appear, the game can start after after the, the captain has, has chosen which mission to do. And you're in. And it's really easy to to get started with the game in multiplayer. Um, 
some other nice touches I mentioned about the social interaction earlier. Well, things that they've done, which is really easy to take for granted, like they added a lip sync function. So when you're you're talking, you see the character, you know, the character's lips move, which is actually pretty funny because people, you know, who, who play the game are, are playing from all over the world and in all kinds of circumstances. So one player, they had a, um, a, a toddler yelling and crying in the background. And for, but from your perspective, it looked like a Vulcan on the team was was, you know, crying from a baby and lips. It was really bizarre, um, but it was something else. And also, uh, you know, they took care. Now, this is based on the HTC Vive controller, but you could do similar with the the Oculus uh, Rift controllers as well, or the touch controllers, is that you could point and, you you know, you could clench to, have, to, to point and you could, you know, shake your hands and so on. Um, so, ha so there are some hand gestures in there. I thought what was really neat is normally when I play in a virtual reality game, the hands are disjointed from the body. Like you just see the hands, you know, maybe up to the up to the wrist. But somehow Ubisoft figured out a way to calculate where your elbow joint is. Uh, so you actually, you know, see the full, you know, length of your arm in virtual reality and, and where your your hands are. So a lot of thought was put into that. Um, so you actually, you know, you had elbow joints. So really, really well done. Uh, now, some things that I thought could have been a, a little better is that as realistic, as as enveloping as the, the, the bridge is, like in the Starship Bridge, I thought that the enemies were a bit arcade-like. So, you know, if you watch the Star Trek movies, the ships are big and, and you know, you, you just can't, you know, like they're just colossal. They're, they're, they're these big ships. But in in the you know when you're on the bridge and you're seeing ships on on the view screen, they actually it just seems more arcade. They don't seem so big, so so behemoth like they do on the TV show and in the movies. Another thing is that from a realism point of view, the way the damage system works is as as your ship is attacked, your key systems will take on damage, and you could repair them up to a hundred percent. But it's your hull that takes permanent damage, and when your hull hits zero, your you know your ship blows up. But it's you know it might be a I would have liked to see a touch where, as your ship is taking damage, you can repair your systems, but not to a hundred percent. It just it didn't seem realistic that you could get everything up to a hundred percent, you know, no matter what happens to your ship. I mean, I would have actually really liked. You know, with the uh, the starships, you have these things called nacelles or your engines, which are those those rods or the main engines of the ship. It would have been really cool to see parts of your ship like blown off. I mean, really, you know, really permanent damage. I thought there were some creative things that could have been done there. Still can. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, one of the big features uh, with with Star Trek Bridge Crew is sure you can you command the Aegis, which is its own uh, starship bridge. Um but what you can also do is you could take command of the original Starship Enterprise 1701 from the 60s TV show. They they did an immaculate recreation of what that ship uh, looks like and in theory should feel like uh, right down to the controls and the view screen and, and uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. They they really worked very hard and they did. They came up with really creative ideas uh, that you could interact. So, for example, you could pick up the captain's, uh, you know, pad. Like on the TV show, it just looks like a pad that maybe he writes on. But in the in the game, you pick up the pad and you see this digital readout. You know, so so they did all kinds of things to, you know, to make it to make it work. However, you know, there were there are some really big challenges with the 1701, like with the 1701 bridge, and uh, I think. Ubisoft even points out that it's really for advanced players to, you know, to effectively play with it is the interface. I mean, normally when you're commanding the Aegis, like the, the main starship bridge, it's relatively easy to understand. You've got a full interface and, you know, it, it's relatively easy to grasp what needs to be done and how to do it. But with the 1701, it's just like the 60s show where it's all like buttons. And I think when they did it in the 60s, they, I don't think they really cared what the buttons did. It was just for TV. But it, it's, uh, you know, when you convert it to a, 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 a pseudo real life interface, not quite the same. And in fact, 
I think Star Trek could take a lesson from Star Trek. Uh, you know, check out what happens when this guy is trying to figure out the starship uh, interface. Sir, our shields are dropping. Raise them. I can't. Where's the override? The override. Fire. Fire. You see, interface is everything. Okay, so if, if, next time, if anyone questions all oh, the interfaces and all that important, you just quote them Star Trek Two, and and uh, it's absolutely true. Now, this is uh, again excellent game. I'm really happy with Star Trek Bridge Crew, and yet it leaves me wanting more. So let me share with you what I want to see more of. Maybe in a future patch, maybe in a follow-up version of the game. You know, this is what I'd like to see. First, more missions. I mean, the, you start off with the traditional campaign missions and they have, you know, an endless supply of random, you know, missions. But uh, I'd, I'd still like to see more stuff, like more originally crafted uh, missions to keep the game going on. In fact, something else I'd like to see is a mission construction set. So something where, you know, gamers like myself could create our own missions, maybe share them with others. I think that would be that would add some fun to the game. 100% Klingons in Star Trek Bridge Crew. We need to see some Romulans, okay? It's, we want to see some Romulan warbirds. We want to see some diversity in, in, in the galaxy. More than this, uh, you know, this, this whole game is, has been played from the, the Star Trek Federation angle. It would be really nice to, to actually uh, take control of a Klingon battle cruiser. You know, like, let's see what it is on the opposite side of the of the fence. I think that would be a lot of fun. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a cooperative game where, you know, each of the four players is on the same bridge. What would really be cool is if there could be team versus team play. What if you've got four people against four people in different starships combating each other instead of going against the computer player? Now, that would really work. I think that would be really exciting. Maybe a change that Ubisoft or Redstorm could do is with that system intrusion function where you, you know, you could disable parts of the, your enemy's ship and so on. Maybe not make it 100% reliable like it is in the game. Create some random elements. So player versus player is more interesting, but lots of fun. Uh, and you know what? I think in addition to team versus team, wouldn't it be cool if you could have more than one ship on the same team and hail each other, cooperate with each other, where the captain is hailing the other ship and you're, you know, you're each working on a, on a shared goal. I think that would be really, really interesting. And, uh, you know, another thing too, I obviously I want a lot, but you know, this is what, you know, sparked the interest. More bridges, more ships, more specs. I mean, this could be a really diverse game, really exciting stuff. Now. You've uh, obviously you've heard my review. Obviously, I like it. Uh, you're, you know, hopefully, you get the game for yourself. Here are some ideas or some recommendations so that you know you you do you do well. So first, if you're the captain of the ship, pay close attention to those objectives. Uh, you know, when you're you're going to get information that everybody else is relying on. You can't just show up in the gal in, in a solar system and hope for the best. You're actually getting important data that could make make or break your your mission. Now, you're also going to be sending out commands to other people on the bridge. So instead of just saying shields up, it's important to actually talk to the person you're giving the order to. So you'll say, you know, tactical, raise the shields, or engineer, raise the shields. Otherwise, there could be confusion on the bridge, and that just adds delay when, you know, and, and it, it could cause a lot of damage. So very important to to speak to the people that you're, um, or indicate who you're, who you're speaking to. Another very important recommendation, before you step in the captain's chair, be the other stations first. You know, be the engineer, be be the tactical officer, be the helmsman, because it's important that you understand what they're capable of, so that you're giving them not just the right commands, but you're kind of having a, a taste of what they're going through, so you you have the right expectations. And another recommend something to be aware of: uh, 
with the force fields, okay, with the shields, that's what's res responsible for, for preventing your ship from taking damage. Once your shields are down, it's going to take about almost two minutes for them to go back up. There's a, there's a recharge that happens. It takes, it takes close to two minutes for your ships to, your, your ship's shields to, to recharge. Don't just divert power to the shields hoping that that recharge rate is going to be faster. That's not going to do anything. The, when you divert power to your shields, it just means that, uh, your, your shields could take more damage before going down. Okay. So don't, don't, that nothing could increase that recharge rate. So once your shields are down, you know, maybe concentrate on, on something else. Just treat it as a loss. Um, for the helmsman. Okay. You're again, you're responsible for moving the ship. If you're trying to stay hidden, that you don't want to be seen by, by the enemy, tr keep your speed to 4000 kph or lower. If you go faster, that means that your, your ship is more noticeable and you'll, you know, you'll take on enemies sooner than you probably want to. Also, if you want to turn faster, okay, uh, a trick I learned is to go in reverse and turn at the same time and your, the speed of the turn will, will be, will be faster. So that's very helpful when you're moving a behemoth like the Starship Aegis. Tactical. Always scan your targets whenever you can. Scan, 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 because uh, you can do things like system intrusions where you interrupt their shields that you could shoot through their shields or disable their engines or disable their weapons. You could do all kinds of stuff. Also, the anomalies. Uh, there's going to be things happening in the solar system that may help your ship. They may damage your ship, but you won't know until you scan them or you learn the hard way. Hopefully, you don't learn the hard way. So scan, scan, scan. Um, also, one thing I mentioned about in, in intrusions that, you know, affecting the enemy shields. Be aware when you when you activate the, the the function, you won't actually drop your enemy's shields. What it does is it gives you the ability to shoot through them. So if you're in a scenario where you have to beam or rescue uh, characters off an, uh, a different ship, even if you do an intrusion, it's not going to take their shields down. You have to actually, t you know, shoot your, the enemy and take those shields down. Engineer. Okay. This is the character that repairs, the, gives power to the rest of the crew so that they can do their work. Keep everyone aware. You have, the engineer has a, a bird's eye view more so than even the captain as to what status the ship is in, what's damaged, how much power is, is at the end in the engines and the shields and so on. So uh, very important to keep the bridge aware of what's going on so they know what they can and can't do. Another thing very important, one of the, one of the abilities of the engineer is what they call rerouting power. So yes, you can have different power levels for different systems, but you can also transfer powers in a different way that lets you do more with what you have. So you can, for example, overload the engines or overload your weapons so that you, that you can get a greater distance and so on. The catch is if you do it too much, you end up, you could, you could blow an energy node and, and be set back. So you have to use it cautiously, but very important that, you know, for, for the engineer. So final remarks for, for Star Trek Bridge Crew. Obviously, this is a great game. Uh, something that uh, Ubisoft announced, which is very interesting, is they're going to, going to be using the Watson platform, which will uh, make it possible to have speech recognition in the game. So, for example, if you're playing single player, you will be able to speak to the other artificial intelligence or AI bridge players uh, naturally and it will understand what you're doing. So you'll say, raise the shields, and they'll be able to raise the shields for you. It's not something that you'll have to point and click with the interface. So really interesting stuff. So we'll see how that unfolds. Uh, I really want to see Ubisoft and Red Storm take this up a level. I think that this awakened a lot of potential, and I'm hoping future patches of the game will add uh, enhancements uh, to you know missions and ships and bridges and all kinds of stuff. I really hope this has a long-term development future and uh star trek bridge crew it comes highly recommended so i'm going to give this a final grade of nine on ten and who knows maybe we'll score more points with future patches but this is really exciting stuff and it comes highly recommended we'll be back with more right after this thanks for visiting me in my messy basement so dj what did you think of star trek bridge crew it was awesome okay 
If you want to be a guest on the show, send an email to Neil's Messy Basement at mtbs3d.com. We'll we'll catch up soon. So you're gonna say bye-bye? Bye. Bye. Bye.